Viewmasters. It's the podcast that we do. Viewmasters. Talk about movies that we view. Viewmasters. My friend Eric and me, Joe. Viewmasters. Hey, let's start the show. Hey. Welcome to the Viewmasters, episode 320, Event Horizon. My name is Joe. My name is Eric. Hello, Eric. Hello, Joe. Uh, how are you? I am doing okay. How are you? I, I am also doing okay. Good to hear. Yes. <laughs> uh, 320, I don't know why I said 320. That's just how it came out. It's, it's all good. <laughs> it, it all plays. True. That all means the same thing. Yep. Uh, it means we've been doing this show for too fucking long. Probably. <laughs> also, if we took into account the 100 episodes of Leak Night, this would be episode 420, dude. Ooh. <laughs> so, uh, keep that in mind as you listen to the episodes. <laughs> also, keep in mind, neither you or I are potheads. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, I know your parents possibly listen, but yeah. uh, have you ever? Uh, I uh, I got a gummy from a friend once. All right. And uh, I had it in a baggie for like six months. <laughs> and I guess I, I must have gone stale. <laughs> but I didn't know that. All right. So I did half of it. And uh, it was awful. <laughs> like just the experience of trying to eat. Right. Half of a stale gummy. Sure, yeah. Uh, and uh, nothing happens. All right. Uh, and then, or no, I think first I did a quarter of it and nothing happened, and then I did half of it and still nothing happened. And uh, and so, no, I've never been high. <laughs> uh, lazy trying, but otherwise. Hey, you know, you, yeah. you tried. I did, yeah. yeah. I mean, maybe someday I'll try it for real. Sure. Uh, what about you, sir? Uh, yeah, I've... I've uh... Uh, smoked uh, a little in the past and uh, had no effect whatsoever. Okay. Um, and then uh, I have had a couple of gummies. Uh, the first time I had a gummy, I just had half of one. Uh, it was fresh. Okay. Uh, nothing happened. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the second time I had one, uh, I, I, I said I, I want a full one this time. Nothing happened. Oh, that's really sad. Okay. Uh, third time, uh, I, I tried one, and it was... Th- there was definitely an effect. Okay. I, I got very giggly. Okay. Uh, it was just very slap happy. Uh, the fourth time I tried one, uh, it... It, uh, it was a terrible fucking experience. Oh, no. All right. Uh, I got super paranoid. I got, like, ragey. Yikes. Uh, It was not good. Okay. I have not done it since. Probably a good choice. Yep. Yeah. (laughs) The the third and fourth times that you did it, uh, did you do more than the previous times? No, I just did did a full gummy. Just a full gummy? Yeah. All right. Hmm. Yep. Interesting. (laughs) Uh, so I, I don't know if they were like just different strains or whatever, uh, but yeah, uh, just two completely polar opposite effects, and uh, it's like uh, it's like I, I don't really drink anymore because uh, the first time I ever just got really sick from drinking, I said that's it. Yeah, and it's pretty much been it. <laughs> sure. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you didn't know, but you should have quit while you were ahead. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I just, uh, I, I understand that there, there's different chemical makes up, makeups to people and whatever, uh, but, it, but it feels to me like the first time you have a terrible experience uh, doing one of these things, uh, maybe that's the cue to, to just pull it back. Yeah. No, I yeah. agree with you. Yeah. <laughs> if something's not pleasant, uh, don't keep doing it. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that uh, reminds me of a question I wanted to ask you. Event Horizon? How many times have you watched this movie? <laughs> Uh, this is probably my fourth time or so. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, why? 
No, I, I, I ask that as a joke question because I totally understand why. Yeah. Uh, there's a, there's a movie by, uh, the other Paul Anderson, uh, called Magnolia. Yeah. Uh, that I have watched a uh, number of times. Uh, even though I don't necessarily really care for it. Okay. Just because I'm trying to figure out, like, I feel like there's something there, and I'm just trying to figure out what it is. Okay. Uh, so I don't know if that's, I know you, you, you said you wanted to watch this so that I could try and figure out why you don't like it. Yeah. Uh, well, that's weird because I've, uh, it, I mean, it's been 20 years or whatever, but, uh, I, I've seen Magnolia and I really loved it. The performances the are great. It, yeah, know. the performances are fantastic in it. Yeah, I just don't know why it doesn't come together for me. So. I mean, you know, it just it, that is just some movies sometimes. Yeah, you know, yeah. Uh, people react differently. Um, I do feel watching it this time, uh, maybe because I, I felt I was more critically open to it okay that i've kind of figured out what it is that does not work for me okay okay uh uh but yeah uh, i did not have a turnaround on, on this one <laughs> okay uh, still not a fan of this movie yeah i was gonna i was gonna suggest that maybe the reason that you don't like it is it's not very good <laughs> It's not a good movie. It, it is not. It's ridiculous. Uh, it is. Uh, it is trying so hard to be so many other different movies. Yeah. Uh, and doing it poorly. Yeah. I feel like Danny Boyle watched this movie and was like, I could do that better. And so he made Sunshine. It's possible. <laughs> uh, oddly, I was listening to uh, a podcast about Sunshine uh, over the weekend. Nice. Uh, and thought about it frequently as I was watching it this time. <laughs> uh, although it has also been you know, 15, 18 years since I've seen that one as well. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Are they doing Danny Boyle on Blank Check? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Because I know you, you uh, had watched... Uh, 28 days later recently, so I wondered if you were watching along with the, uh, the podcast. I, I had planned to, uh, but, uh, you know, just it got away from me. Yeah. And, uh, but 28 days later, I had been wanting to rewatch for a long time anyway. So uh, I just went ahead and did that. Uh, I, I, I still would at some point like to go back and rewatch, you know, Train Spotting and Shallow Grave. And millions, which uh, I really love. Yeah, so, millions is great. Uh, but uh, you know what? I'm kind. Of, that's that's pretty much the end of it for me and Danny Boyle. Yeah, yeah. I've, I've never seen Shallow Grave. Okay. Um, I've seen Slumdog Millionaire. Yeah, I, I, um, that that was my. It wasn't my first pass because the, the the two he did between Train Spotting and uh, Twenty Days uh, was was you know had no interest in was. A Life Less Ordinary? Is that, that one of them? Okay. That is one of them, and the other was The Beach. Oh, yeah, I have seen The Beach. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the Beach is fine. All right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yes, Event Horizon. Yes. Uh, yeah, so uh, nothing in this movie works. Yeah, yeah, not really. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and so, so I was reading up a little bit uh, b before we... Uh, jumped on Mike, and uh, I know that there was quite a bit cut out of it. Okay. Um, I, I didn't fully understand the the reasoning why. Okay. Uh, but I guess basically they shot a bunch of stuff. Uh, they shot a bunch of stuff that took place in hell. Oh, wow. Uh, that apparently somebody labeled as, like, B-roll. Okay. So they just uh, deleted it because, or got rid of it because they, they it, was, it was before digital. Sure. Uh, because they just thought it would be like, you know, just shots of like people pushing buttons or shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> oh, uh, wow. That said, I don't know that any of that stuff would have helped. Yeah, I mean, I feel like we get some sort of glimpses of, of what hell looks like. Right. Uh, if we are assuming that whatever the portal that's opened up, uh, leads to is in fact hell. Right. Um, but, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know that adding more of that 
would really have helped anyone's understanding of the movie or added anything really at all to it. No, because it is nonsense. Yeah. Uh, and it is derivative. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't feel like any of the actors really wanted to be there. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like... I mean, I, I, I enjoy what uh, a lot of the people are doing. Okay. Uh, I mean, Lawrence Fishburne I enjoy a lot. I mean, I like a lot of the actors in this movie. Yeah. Uh, but He's like, just doing his Lawrence Fishburne stuff. Yeah, but he feel, it feels so low-key that I, I just feel like he is not invested whatsoever. Yeah. Sam Neill, also, I don't feel as super invested, but a non-invested Sam Neill still pre- feels pretty into it. Right. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, he makes it well. Yeah, I guess I don't know what investment in the script for this movie looks like. <laughs> like I like maybe they all just know what kind of movie they're making, which is a B sci-fi slash horror movie, right? And are just putting in that exact amount of effort. Could be. Uh, like I feel like Sam Neill. So I sort of started realizing that uh, Sam Neill is really down for horror. Yeah. Uh, he, he is like a low-key horror icon. Okay. <laughs> like, he's not a guy that when you think horror, you think Sam Neill, but he has been in a lot. Okay. Uh, you know, he, he was grown-up Damien in one of the Omen sequels. Wow, I did not know that. Uh, he was in uh, one of the two movies that Jason and I bailed on during Gutter Trash. <laughs> Uh, called Possession. Okay. Uh, which which I guess was going to be a horror movie at some point, but <laughs> like an hour in, wasn't doing it yet. Okay. <laughs> and we bailed. <laughs> Good for you. Yeah. Time is precious. Uh, but it's weird because that's a movie, much like Event Horizon, that I feel like a lot of people are just like, it's really great. And yet, <laughs> yeah. Here I sit, <laughs> broken hearted. Right, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that these movies aren't doing it for me. <laughs> that didn't rhyme. <laughs> yeah, you know, uh, oh man, I don't know, I don't know about this, Eric. <laughs> uh, I enjoyed uh, young Alfred Pennyworth in this. I thought he was entertaining, sure. but mostly because it's like, hey, that's young Alfred Pennyworth. Right. Or as I like to call him, Thug Butler. Right. <laughs> right. That word's racist. You can't You can't call him that. Why not? Butler? <laughs> yes. Butler's racist. <laughs> Didn't you see Lee Daniels, the butler? I actually haven't seen that. No, no, neither have I. <laughs> uh, um, yeah, uh, <clears throat> I, I enjoyed him. I enjoyed uh, uh, Lucius Malfoy <laughs> in his role. Sure. Um, little, uh, little baby Jason Isaacs. Little baby Jason Isaacs. Um, others. <laughs> you, uh, during the opening credits of this movie. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you know, you, you you did seemingly seem shocked that uh, there were quite a few big names in this movie. Yeah. Uh, you had a visceral reaction to the name Jack Noseworthy. Yeah, Noseworthy is an incredible last name. Okay. Yeah, that's all it was. Okay. <laughs> like, how do you end up with that last name? Uh, I, mean, I mean, you know. How does anybody end up with any of their last names? Well, I mean, a lot of last names are based on, like, occupations. Sure. <laughs> um, but I don't see how Noseworthy, how you get there, really. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, how do you get a last name like Pertwee? That's that's fair. That is fair. <laughs> what are they doing there? And I assume it's Scottish. I don't know, it's I don't Scottish know. or Irish or something. I don't know. It's all UK to me. Yeah, <laughs> unknown. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, there's there's uh, there's people in this movie, and they're doing things. <laughs> they sure are. <laughs> Uh, some of it is 80 yard. Uh-huh. <laughs> so as to clarify what's actually happening, maybe? Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, yeah, so so this movie is it's like a cross between uh, uh, Alien, of course, is, is uh, seemingly huge influence. Uh, Hellraiser. Okay. Because uh, I feel like uh, 
like the design of the ship is like you know hey what if Cenobites uh, designed the alien ship you know okay sure I've actually never seen any Hellraiser stuff so right, I have no fair. frame of reference for that uh, no obviously you know the, the the references to hell and other dimensions uh, the the final look of Sam Neill yeah uh, in his uh, d- demonic form Mr. Zaz yeah. <laughs> Is sort of, you know, Cenobite-y. Yeah, okay. Uh, um, uh, it's just, it's, it's uh, you know, there's a little bit of uh, another Sam Neill movie, In the Mouth of Madness. Okay. Uh, which which came out uh, three years prior to this one. <laughs> so he, he was on a run. Yeah. Well, I mean, he was, he was a pretty big name for a while yeah. after Jurassic Park, I feel like. Yeah. Uh, I mean, the, the man once auditioned for James Bond, so wow. you know, he's he's you know, he, he, he's just, he's an icon. That's cool. I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah, I cannot imagine him as James Bond at all. Uh, yeah, there, there's somewhere out there is floating around, uh, uh, you know, like a test screening of of him. Uh, I think it was you know it was after Roger Moore had retired uh, yeah. before they hired Timothy Dalton. Okay, uh, but but I feel like. The, the the test was like from one of Roger Moore's movies, but uh, and, and yeah, it just it, it it's off. Yeah, yeah, he, he's not quite James Bond. Yeah, <laughs> uh, but you know, uh, yeah, he's I I think he's he's always good, mm-hmm. <laughs> whether he he is trying or not, and I don't think he was trying too hard in this one. I I think that. I agreed. <laughs> um, but there are some, a few scenes where he's just chewing. Oh, absolutely. Just making a meal of the scenery, yep. which is great. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I feel like he, he is going for it uh, with disregard to the quality of it. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or again, he read the script and was like, oh, the, I can do this. Right, yeah. Okay, sure. Uh, I, I'm sure also it was probably like, well, I get to be the bad guy at the end. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Uh, so, you know, I'm just going to save everything I've got. <laughs> yeah. To when I just go batshit. <laughs> it's, it's, like, uh, it's like how Stephen King didn't like that Jack Nicholson was cast as uh, Jack Torrance because Jack Nicholson is already inherently a little crazy looking right uh sam, sam neill could have been a good jack torrance <clears throat> yeah because he's he's very sort of calm and subdued and until he snaps right and then yeah very very much so just lets it all out <laughs> uh but yeah you know uh uh shit uh kathleen quinlan is, is pretty good in this yeah uh is she stark no, she is uh, Peters. Peters, okay. Uh, Stark is uh, Jolie Richardson. Okay. Who is a name I know. Yeah, I know that name as well. Could not place any other movie that she's ever been in. Yeah, can't think of it. I, I even yeah. sort of thought I recognized her, but don't know what right. from. She, she's got a recognizable face as well, but yeah. And, and also, I may constantly get her confused with Jolie Fisher. Okay. <laughs> I don't know who that is. Uh, I believe that's Carrie Fisher's daughter. Oh, okay. All right. And or sister? <laughs> and or sister? And or. Hold on a second. Isn't Carrie Fisher's daughter Billy something? Yeah. She may have other daughters. Okay. All right. I only know the one that was in, in the Star Wars movies. <clears throat> but uh, I think now that, that in retrospect, it's probably her sister. Okay. But, but she was in like a bunch of sitcoms and stuff. And okay. Like on, on an iteration of Ellen DeGeneres' sitcom. Gotcha. Oh, uh, whatever that one was. Ellen. <laughs> Possibly. I think that's just what it was called. Yeah. Uh, but I feel like, you know, like it changed entire casts. It, yeah. Multiple times. Yeah. Like, like I remember Bruce Campbell was on a season. Okay. Maybe. All right. <laughs> and then she had everyone fired because she, they, they looked her in the eye. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> so they just had to recast the whole thing. Probably. <laughs> like just burn it to the ground. Let's start again. Yep. <laughs> Ellen is a tyrant. Yep. <laughs> Best friends with George W. Bush. <laughs> Look, rich people got to stick together. 
He's not such a bad guy. <laughs> uh, happy 20th anniversary, Iraq War. <laughs> Mission accomplished. That's him, right? There was a banner. <laughs> you don't go to Kinko's unless you're damn sure it's <laughs> over. No. America. Event Horizon. Yeah. <laughs> so I thought uh, with a title like Event Horizon that, that a black hole would be involved. Sure. And it sort of was. Kind of, it, but not really. Uh, it, it's involved by mention. Right, exactly. Yeah. Not, not by any sort of uh, <laughs> representation or... Uh, you know, a lot, a lot of tell, not show, is yes. in this movie. I think, uh, now that I think about it, you know, that uh, Doctor Who two-parter, where they they go to, like, a space station that's near a black hole. Yeah. And I think, is that the one where, where the Doctor basically, like, fights the devil? I think so. Yeah. Yeah. That's weird! What? <laughs> Was that a rip-off of this movie? <laughs> Like I said, I feel like this movie is well-loved by a lot of people. (laughs) Russell C. Davies among them, apparently? Maybe. Okay. (laughs) And it's kind of why I wanted you to watch this with me. Yeah. Because I feel like I am in a vast minority. (laughs) (laughs) And I needed you to either tell me that I'm wrong... Well, confirm that I am right. Yeah, no, I uh, confirmed. <laughs> I'm pretty sure there's there's interesting stuff in this. Uh, I guess I don't know. Is there? Maybe I feel like there's. I feel like there is, but I can't pinpoint what any of it is. I mean, you know, I I do like the idea of you know a a ship somehow accidentally opening a portal to hell. Maybe, yeah. Uh, you know, if we actually get to see any of that. Right. But we don't. And then also, the the ship is evil? Yeah, none of that made sense, though. No, not at all. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they, they, they keep making reference to the ship, like, is, is like, doing stuff to everybody. But it, it's not. Yeah. <laughs> it's just, it's just a ship. Yeah. Uh, I'm fully on board with uh, whichever character said that at one point in time. <laughs> that was, uh... That was Stark, I think. So okay. That, yeah. So, so here's a question for you. Um, did did Sam Neill know that the ship was fucked before they got there? Because I, I feel like it's really unclear whether whether he knew something was wrong ahead of time, or am I am I trying to read like too much Paul Reiser onto him? <laughs> I I think you are. Okay. Uh, I. I... I mean, his turn comes from out of nowhere. Yeah. Uh, I think that's what I'm trying to justify it. (laughs) Uh, But no, I I mean, obviously he he has a a vested interest in the safety of the ship. Yeah. uh, Because that, as you pointed out, is his baby. Right. (laughs) Uh, But no, I I don't feel like he, he knows that it's evil. Okay. <laughs> or whatever it is that they're trying to say. <laughs> uh, I, f- I feel like, you know, when the the, the gravitational drive or whatever it is, uh, the the uh, uh, the angel on board the ship. Yeah. Because uh, it looks like a biblical angel. Right. <laughs> uh, with, with the spinning rings in the eyes. Mm-hmm. Um. I feel like once that gets activated, maybe that sort of activates something in him. Okay. Uh, but also, you know, I feel like, but then to your point, if he built the thing, then maybe he would have known. Yeah. I, but it's it's never clear. Yeah. And like, there's there's the, uh, Lawrence Fishburne asks him at one point where the ship went, where it's been for seven years. Right. And there's just this long shot. Uh, of Sam Neill's face, and he does not reply before it cuts to another scene. Right. <laughs> and I was like, oh, so is that supposed to be knowing? Does he know where it went? Is he <laughs> is he scared? What's happening here? 
And he is already having hallucinations before. Yeah. Uh, getting near the event horizon. Yeah. Um, but, but he, his character feels so sort of, I guess, fish out of water, mm-hmm. you know, up to that point that, that it's not, it, it's hard to think that he is sort of like, I guess in on it is not the right term, yeah. but you know. Yeah. There, there was a point where, uh, when you see the footage of the crew of the Event Horizon, I thought maybe his wife was going to be among them. Right. And that would explain a little bit more about, you know, the flashbacks and, and sort of the PTSD that he was experiencing. Right. But nope. 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 I, I, I thought the same. And yeah, she, she is not there. Yeah. I mean, if she is, definitely not clear. Yeah. Um, maybe did he... So we, we find out later that his wife killed herself. Right. Uh, and there's some real gratuitous nudity that's just completely unnecessary. Sure. But you know, gotta, gotta get it in there. But, you know, it's 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 not sexy. <laughs> no, not at all. No. It's it's suicide nudity. Yeah. Which is real weird. Um, but... I mean, if you were gonna kill yourself in a bathtub, would you do it in your clothes? No, probably not. Yeah, there you go. That's fair. Okay. All right. However, she was wearing underwear, so, you know. <laughs> well, it's rated R, but not, <laughs> not, not a super hard R. <laughs> but, uh... So, so I'm, I'm, I'm overthinking it now. All right. Did he build the drive knowing that it would be able to punch a hole into the afterlife so that he could rescue his wife from hell because everyone knows that when you kill yourself, you go to hell. <laughs> or maybe purgatory. Either way. Okay. Uh, that's an interesting theory. Because the, at, at one point, the, the, you know, the captain, Lawrence Fishburne, gets, like, flashes of all of the other crew members in hell. Right. And is like, they're not dead! They're not dead! Right. What the fuck?! <laughs> uh... But, but, extrapolating from that, like, sure. is it just something that didn't come through in the script <laughs> that maybe this, this was all his plot to save his, his wife or whatever? Uh, it's an interesting theory, uh, one that I'm going to counter. Okay, please do. Uh, that maybe, I mean, he, he built this drive, uh, he, he doesn't know, like, what it's going to do, but, you know, it's got to be tested. Yeah. Uh, and he puts his wife through it. Oh, okay. And she comes back, obviously damaged like everyone else does. Yeah. And that's why she kills herself. Okay. That's true. I guess we don't have any. Well, I guess he he blames himself because he was so consumed with his work. Right. Yeah. Okay. If he's consumed with his work already, then maybe that's not why he built it. What right. Built it. Built built it. Uh, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, nothing in this script is clear. No. Yeah. Uh, nothing makes sense. Is there a comic adaptation that explains more of it? Maybe. <laughs> I wish. I mean, I would read that. I would too. <laughs> or Event Horizon, the novelization, maybe? Ooh, probably. Yeah. All right. I feel like this is one of those movies that would have had one. Yeah? Yeah. All right, book report. Okay. <laughs> I'll, I'll look it up. Excellent. <laughs> uh, boy. Yeah, just... Uh, uh, just... Yeah, none of this movie really works for me. Yeah, uh, the, like the it's it's so late nineties, uh, and, and I would say it's also so forgettable because again, I've seen this about four times. I didn't remember a fucking thing. Yeah, it, it's not been that long ago since <laughs> I watched it last. <laughs> I was taking a drink of water when you said it, but yes, it is very late nineties. Yeah, uh, I, I mean, I, I don't know if I did uh, out loud in person, uh, but when the credits started, I laughed at least to myself. I don't think you did. I didn't okay. hear it if you did. <laughs> Just the the prodigy, or at least prodigy sound like song. Yeah, that comes up at the the. As the movie says, the end. <laughs> right. Yeah, what the fuck? Okay. Okay. 
the movie ends on a uh, Friday the 13th-esque uh, jump scare. Yeah. Like, just one last one, you gotta get in there. Uh, so, so Stark and Cooper, uh, are the only ones who survive. Nope, Justin also survives. Oh, right, Ju- I, look, I forgot all about Justin, because he's basic, so, basically dead. So did the dead. movie. Yeah, basically dead. <laughs> um, and then, yeah, we, uh, we, we get a sort of fake out, the, they, uh, Stark wakes up from the cryo sleep or whatever yeah. uh and then uh is greeted by a rescue team that is led by sam neil yeah. ah! <laughs> uh, and then she wakes up for real and 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 as i'm t- explaining it now i'm i'm realizing it's a mirror of sam neil waking up from the cryo sleep yeah. uh, and being greeted by his his dead wife uh and then being woken up for real maybe she's got the curse now too Ooh. <laughs> Yeah. The, the ship has possessed her. Yes. Maybe. Who knows? Yeah. I mean, so, it, it, it occurred to me while I was watching it, so the their plan is that they're going to use part of the ship, part of the Event Horizon uh, is going to be blown free from the rest of the Event Horizon and be used as sort of a lifeboat. Right. But if the whole ship is infected with whatever <laughs> this evil is... Isn't it just going to hitch a ride on the lifeboat part? That is usually what evil does. Yes. It hitches rides. Yes. Yeah. But but I guess they're saying that since it's separated from the graviton drive, <laughs> or whatever sci-fi nonsense they called it. Right. <laughs> that, that, that is the source of the evil, because that's where the black goo is. Right. Sure. Uh, Not to be confused with the black goo on the X-Files. Nope. <laughs> this is black goo that leads you to hell. Right. Maybe. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> I don't know. It causes hallucinations? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, so Jesus Stark Christ. is the only one that... No, Cooper also doesn't have any hallucinations either. Oh, right. Yeah. yeah. Or Smitty maybe also doesn't either. No, yeah, I don't think he does. Okay. Now that you mention it. Uh, Unless they were cut. Yeah, it's just possible. Yeah, uh, but but it it's just weird that like we both mentioned at one point in the movie, like we're Stark. Yeah, uh, she just disappears for a good chunk of the movie. Yeah, uh, and then is found unconscious. Uh, so I feel like that is definitely a part that was cut out. Yeah, definitely. Uh, especially as seemingly a big role as she has in this movie. Right. Uh, being one of the last survivors, etc. <laughs> uh, but yeah, just like I, I am, I am truly curious as to like what what the deleted scenes were. Yeah. Uh, which again, uh, Paul Anderson has said. Uh, they're just gone forever. Okay, so they're not on the the Blu-ray that you own of no. this movie. No, nope, no. Nope. Okay, <laughs> that's too bad. Yeah, I mean there might be, but uh, you know, it would probably just be rough cuts or whatever. Sure. Um, also, the movie just isn't scary. It's not. <laughs> yeah, it it doesn't like there's there's a there's a bit of a ticking clock to it. Right. Um, once they they sort of get stuck on the event horizon and have to repair the the ship, but even like that doesn't make any fucking sense at all. How their ship gets damaged by I don't know a psychic gravity loop or something from the the hyperspace graviton drive. I don't fucking know. I don't know. Shit just happens in this movie, and it doesn't make any sense. And and then it's over. <laughs> and that's all that happens. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. But yeah, no, you're right. Like, there's no... I feel like there's no, like, real tension. Right. Other than, this is weird. Ooh. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Like, even the fucking, you know, core or whatever is made out of spikes. Yeah. Uh, and they don't even utilize that. Right? To... Like, I was so ready for someone to get impaled. Right? Oh, man. 
Oh, uh, I assume that set was reused as Cerebro in the X Men movies because it's just, uh, <laughs> just a big round room. It's quite possible. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it's just, it's, it's so lackluster. Like, there, there's a couple of jump scares, but, but they're not really all that effective. Yeah. Uh, some of them just, <laughs> like, it's a jump scare. I know it's supposed to come without warning, but. <laughs> yeah, like, there's without warning and there's without fucking warning. Right. <laughs> like, there, there's the part where, um. Not Stark, the others. Rogers? No. Peters. Peters, thank you. I knew it was a first name that ends with an S. Uh, where Peters is in, like, the, the med bay or whatever, and there's a, there's, like, she sees the, she sees her son on the table. Right. Uh, but we don't, we've never seen her son before. So, like, or, or I didn't know anyway. He, I don't think we had. He, she's watching a video earlier. Like, oh, like okay. Other. Uh, 1997 iPad. Wow, I don't remember that at all. Because <laughs> it's, uh, it's, uh, it's when Lawrence Fishburne tells her that, you know, hey, I tried to get you pulled off this detail. Oh! But, uh, yeah. Okay, I was I was uh, coming back from putting my food away, okay, I think, yeah, when yeah. that came on. And I was like, why is he waiting till right now <laughs> to tell her? Like, they are already at their destination. Yeah. Like, that's just fucking rude. Yes. Like, 56 days has passed since the first scene. Right. <laughs> but so when that kid showed up, I was like, holy shit, there's like fucking Newt is hiding on this ship. <laughs> and then and then it, the kid disappeared, and I was like, okay. Yeah. What? Oh man! <laughs> so, but that's on me because I I didn't see the the earlier video. Okay, it's I mean you still make a fair point. It it is sort of out of nowhere. Yeah, like like at least like Sam Neill having his visions of his dead wife, or or Lawrence Fishburne having visions of like the Burning Man, with with the story that he tells later. Like yeah. like those all sort of like okay, these are their darkest. You know, thoughts and secrets, you know, come to life that the ship is bringing out. Yeah. Uh, like, her son is alive and well. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> yeah, this like, is just, like, her fear. Really. Right. Yeah. Uh, it just it's, it doesn't make any sense. It's, yeah. Uh, and, like, like <clears throat> as far as, like, the other, the other two having hallucinations, because... Again, I don't think anybody else in the movie does. Yeah. Uh, uh, like, like it sort of makes sense in, like, just, just a, a horror setting, storytelling-wise. Uh, hers just, just doesn't. Yeah. Uh, cause, cause, you know, she has no reveal later of, of, you know, why she would be thinking of, of about this way about her son like all we know is that uh she's not getting to spend time with him but when she gets back she's gonna have him for the summer yeah you know yeah okay sure cool yeah enjoy yep you're gonna die first (laughs) and i think she does i'm pretty sure she does yes uh which takes place like a full hour into the movie yeah which is another thing well justin yeah, yeah. Justin effectively dies. Yeah, yeah, such pretty one. early. <clears throat> but even after his his trauma, yeah, uh, let's call it for now. Uh, like it still takes like another hour or so before anything else happens in this movie. Yeah. Uh, so like like there's <laughs> it is it is just. Filmmakers who are not up to snuff attempting to replicate the formula of Alien. Yeah, basically. <laughs> you know. Yeah. Uh, they they they're just not good enough. Uh, and I know Paul W S Anderson has his supporters and his fans. Uh, I I think I can safely say I've seen enough of his movies to say that I am not one of them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> yeah, I mean this 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 movie 
is is the oh, man. I was gonna say it's not terrible, but I can't. I'm not sure if I can say that. Uh, <laughs> it's watchable. Yeah, but it's not good. I mean, and and it's watchable in the '90s movie kind of way. Again, having again seen it like four times at this point. Yeah, you know, I, I guess I can't argue with the fact that it's watchable. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's a tight ninety minutes. It is. Uh, thankful for that. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but also, we got about half an hour into it, and then we paused. Yeah, uh, and then the DVD player shut off. Yep. And then when we turned it back on, I was like, I have no idea how far into this movie we are. <laughs> like, it could have been an hour at that point. Yeah. Uh, I had logged at the time where we paused, so you know, I I, I knew where we were. Uh, but it was upsetting because my. My Blu-ray player usually picks up from you know, yeah. where you stop it. Well, so it's, it's, it's uh, just this movie, probably. Yeah, it's fucking a better like, Are you sure you want to finish this movie? We're gonna give you an out. We're gonna not <laughs> save your spot. I, I honestly, I think the ship just possessed my Blu-ray player. Oh shit! Get rid of it. <laughs> Toss it. <laughs> oh no! It's in all of your electronics now. <laughs> It's like the Megan AI. It's travels. <laughs> Luckily, your home isn't all the way smart. It's it's not very smart at all. <laughs> and I prefer to keep it that way. Yes, definitely. This is a dumb house. <laughs> yep. Uh, I had a uh, had an ex girlfriend who got an Alexa. Like, like kind of like when they first came out. Okay. And I was just like, this is just not a good idea. Yeah. Yeah. Like, just, do you really want this machine that listens to you all the time? Uh-huh. <laughs> it's fucked up. Yep. And we bring them into our homes. Willingly. Yeah. Yep. Of course, my current girlfriend also has one, and still just the same same thing. Yeah. Uh, I, I will never have one. Yeah, I... A, I don't feel the need. No. Nope. Yeah. I, I don't do uh, like whatever on my phone. Mm -hmm. like, nope. I, I I can type. <laughs> yeah. I I have Siri on my phone, but I have to push a button to turn it on. Right. Uh, assuming that that, <laughs> that that that's working the way that it's supposed to, it will only listen when I want it to. Right. I uh, I have a, an Android, Samsung. So it, it came with Bigsby. Bigsby? Bixby. Bixby, okay. Yes. Aww. Yeah. Oh, Bill Bixby. <laughs> uh, but not nearly as cool, but it, it is a, a Siri type thing. Uh, sure. And yeah, I, when I first got it, I said, what the fuck is this? <laughs> and it said, I'm sorry, I cannot hear you. Yeah. Uh, then I, I then spent as much time as I humanly could to figure out how do I disable this <laughs> and make sure that it never works. <laughs> The, the the best way to do it is just to take a hammer to the thing. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> uh, oh boy. Event Horizon. Yeah. It's a movie that we watch. It is. Uh, it is it is the epitome of nineteen ninety seven horror sci fi films. Is there is there a a movie about a spaceship that's haunted? Like a like a haunted house, uh, uh, Event Horizon. No, that's well. That's what I was thinking of. But I was like, is there another movie that does this better? Uh, that's good maybe? like this. I mean, Sunshine, kind of, kind of. Uh, I mean, it's not exactly that. But yeah. Now I'm curious. I don't have my phone on me, so okay. uh, we're just gonna leave that up to the, the listener to that's find fine. out. Yeah, if if you know, listener, because because God knows I'm not gonna remember to look it up later. Uh, let me know. Is there a, is there a haunted spaceship movie uh, out there? Jason X. Yeah, well, okay, sure. But no, it's still Jason. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but also a much better movie than this. 100 times better. 100 times better. <laughs> this movie needed a, a kung fu robot in it to fight Sam Neill. <laughs> I would have loved it. <laughs> I mean... The only thing this movie really made me, like like I can say, is good for is that it made me want to watch uh, Sunshine. Okay. And it made me want to watch uh, In the Mouth of Madness. Nice. 
which I mean, honestly, kind of both movies combined equals Event Horizon. Okay, but probably better if you actually did that. Right. <laughs> <laughs> better than the result of Event Horizon. <laughs> a movie that someone wrote. Yep. And that someone directed. Yep. And that people acted in. They did. I, I hope everyone got paid well. Yeah. Uh, I, I hope Lawrence Fishburne uh, maybe gets some good residuals if it plays on TV. Sure. Yeah. Seems like a sci-fi channel staple. Probably. Uh, you know... Uh... You know, I'm, I'm sure Sam Neill uh, is, is doing okay. Uh, yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah. He's, 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 I'm sure he's doing okay financially. How's yeah, that? yeah, yeah. Is he not doing okay otherwise? He uh, revealed earlier this week that he has cancer. Oh, yeah. Well, I did not know that. Yeah, I'm, I'm very sorry. I, yeah. I, I hope he is able to pull through. Me too. Uh, it's it's uh, it's blood cancer, which is very difficult to treat. Yeah. So. yeah. Oh man. Yeah. Thoughts are with Sam Neill, then. Definitely. Uh, do, do yourselves all a favor and go watch uh, Hunt for the Wilders, people. Yes. A much better Sam Neill movie. Definitely. <laughs> also, Thor Ragnarok. Yeah. <laughs> Hell, Thor Love and Thunder. Yeah. Sam Neill in that one? I don't remember. Uh, I think he might be. Okay. I can't recall. Uh, like, just maybe, like, in the background. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, anyway. Yeah. Uh, oh boy, oh boy. Event Horizon. Yeah. yeah. Uh, all right. Thank you for confirming for me that it's just not a good movie. My pleasure. I'm oh. glad I could be of service. I'll probably not ever get rid of the Blu-ray. Sure. Sure. Because I'm sure five years down the road, I'll say, I wonder if this is any good stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Sir, I would direct you to this episode of Viewmasters, <laughs> where we determine that no, it is not. <laughs> That said, I do plan to watch Magnolia soon at some point, and if I can find it on Blu-ray, I'm going to buy it. So, live your life, man. There you go. <laughs> I just recently bought Donnie Darko on <clears throat> Blu-ray, another movie that I has never really connected for me, but everybody loves. So. That, that, that is one that did totally connect for me, so, okay. you know? Yeah. Uh, but but also, I can totally see why it wouldn't. Yeah. You know? Yeah. <laughs> Maybe next time. Yep. Uh, so, so uh, of of the many Andersons who direct movies, mm-hmm. uh, this this is Paul W. Anderson, Paul W. S. Anderson, uh, credited as Paul Anderson. Right. Uh, have you seen any of his other films? Do you know any of his other films? Did he do a movie called Blood Rain? Uh, possibly. I don't know. Okay. Uh, that's the did, only did one I can see, think of. Did that, you see Blood Rain? Uh, I feel like maybe I saw part of it. Okay, like, I played the video game. It might have been a TV movie <laughs> with, uh, <clears throat> with, is it, uh, a What's Her Nuts that played TX in, in Terminator 3. Uh, Christina Locken? Yes. Uh, and, and I think maybe Ben Kingsley's in it. That, that I believe that that is was a theatrical film. Okay, all uh, right. Uh, based on a video game, okay, w- w- which I have played. I think maybe he directed that movie. <laughs> that, that's that's possible. I mean, that feels maybe more like an Uwe Boll. Oh, uh, you know what? It is an Uwe Boll. Okay, just kidding. Uh, I uh, I mean, name some name some other Paul W. S. Anderson movies for me. Well, let me just first say that uh, you're not far off in confusing the two. <laughs> Because uh, cause, cause the man has, has directed some, some crap. Yeah. Uh, like uh, most of the Resident Evil movies. Okay. <laughs> of which any of those? I don't think so. Maybe I've, I've, I've seen all except for whatever the newest one is, which was, was the, the reboot. Okay. Uh, but, but I saw all the... Uh... Fuck, why can't I remember her name? Uh... Oh, Mila Jovovich. That's who. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I saw the Mila Jovovich starring a Resident Evil films. Okay. Uh, there's like maybe two of them that are okay to good. Okay. Are they married? Did they make that up? Uh, they might be. I, I think they might be. Okay. Yeah. Maybe I'm thinking of uh, Kate Beckinsale and uh, the Paul Did- Tompkins character yeah. uh, and the Underworld movies. Yeah. God, I can't think of that guy's name. <laughs> but I know he throws great sex parties. <laughs> what is his name? 
It doesn't matter. It doesn't. It's right there. Yeah, it it's, is. It's frustrating. Yeah. <laughs> People are screaming. Yep. The listener that we have is screaming right now. Your mom is very upset. <laughs> yeah, my us. mom's like, why can't you think of the name of the director of the Underworld movies? I'm sorry, mom. <laughs> really sorry. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, so those, uh, um, I feel like maybe he did, uh, like, Death Race, uh, the, the Jason Statham one. Uh, Mortal Kombat, the the very first one. Oh wow! Okay. Uh, I, I think he did whatever the most recent iteration of the Three Musketeers was. <laughs> All right. Interesting. <laughs> yeah. W- which I believe he just turned into more uh, video gamey cartoon bullshit. I was gonna say it seems like a like a tonal swerve. Yeah. But yeah. No, that makes more sense. <laughs> Uh, yeah, just, just a lot of, uh, real bad, uh, sci-fi video game stuff. Okay, so, yeah, I think this may be the only Paul W.S. Anderson movie I've ever seen. Alright. <laughs> uh, search out his filmography at your own risk. <laughs> I mean, I don't know that anything bad's gonna happen. Probably, yeah, probably look it up, right? Yeah, probably not. Is my, is my phone gonna get possessed by Satan or something? I don't think so. <laughs> Unless it has a Gravitron uh, device. Uh... All iPhones do, oh, actually. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, then probably. Okay, well, fuck. That's <laughs> what powers Siri. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> uh, Siri stands for Satan is really intense. Good night, everybody. Wait, no. What's what's uh, what's making you happy, Eric? <laughs> uh, so it's only been like three days since we last talked, <laughs> right? Uh, so you know the thing that you know last week's thing that made me happy was a very lengthy discussion. Uh, this week's thing that makes me happy is uh, free cheeseburgers. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, I was out and about Sunday. I uh, said, you know, I'm getting pretty hungry. I'm going to run through rallies and get me a cheap cheeseburger. Wow. Uh, and so I, I, they, they now have uh, those uh, automated uh, robot teller things that the, the instead of like an actual human taking your order. Interesting. Yeah, okay. I hate them. I had no idea. <laughs> Fucking hate them. Uh, Lee's Famous Recipe also has those. Uh, I hate them. Okay. Uh, but but you, you talk to a robot, then she takes your order. And I said, I wanted two cheeseburgers with just ketchup. Uh, and then there was a long pause. And then, does that complete your order? Yes. Calculating. <laughs> Zero. Please pull forward. (laughs) Okay. And I was like, okay, well, that seems weird. I pulled forward. The guy at the window was like, kind of, was like, uh, uh." and then he was like, here's your receipt. And I looked, and it was a receipt, and it said zero dollars. And then he handed me a bag with two cheeseburgers. That's awesome. (laughs) All right. So, that, I'm taking it. This is how the AI wins us over. (laughs) By giving us free stuff. I mean, fair. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Be careful. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. Yeah, well. Don't get too comfortable. All right, fine. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what's the worst that could happen? It leads me into hell? Yeah, I guess it could. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Or it uh, uh, takes over your drawing style. Oh. And, and renders you obsolete. Okay. Well, as, a, as a person. I mean, I'm... I already feel like I'm rendering myself obsolete. Oh, so. no. <laughs> oh, no. Uh, I'm tired. Yeah, I get it. I hear that, man. What about you, sir? Uh, I uh, I have been uh, flagrantly ignoring the wishes of Scott Ackerman uh, and listening to super old episodes of Comedy Bang Bang uh, back when it was Comedy Death Ray. Okay. And that's been really entertaining. Okay. And so far I haven't heard, uh, well, I, I've heard a couple things that are a little questionable, uh, but not from Scott himself, 
Uh, just from from people who were guests. Okay. Uh, so uh, so yeah, that's been really fun. <laughs> I'd never listened to any of the old uh, old. Is it uh, CD one hundred and one was yeah, the station yep. that he was on? Yeah. Never listened to any of that stuff before. Wow. So so yeah, that's been really fun. I I, I mean, not to brag. Uh uh-huh, Okay. <laughs> but I, I started listening to comedy Death Ray. Yeah. Like the fourth fifth episode in wow yeah. okay uh like like i heard one episode with scott ackerman and then i think the next one was like a guest host yeah uh, he had quite a few guest hosts at the the early days yeah uh i distinctly remember an episode that i've never gone back to speaking of questionable stuff okay oh, uh, uh he had a a guest who i don't believe has ever been on the show again okay uh, Charlene Yi, okay, uh, comedian actress, yeah, uh, and one of the the other guests playing a character uh, got super racist. Oh no! Oh no! And and that person has been on numerous times since. Oh, jeez, because you know, because he's playing characters. Yeah. Ugh. <laughs> but uh, like like I feel like like almost in the middle of the show, like like they had to kind of like. Stop and explain to Charlene e that this is all made up. Yeah. yeah. Yikes. Uh, very uncomfortable. Yeah. From that's... what I read, I recall. Yeah. I mean, you can be playing a character and still not be super racist yeah. with it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I heard uh, maybe, or, or I don't think the first appearance, but a very early appearance of Dalton Wilcox. Uh, the the first appearance of his book, You Must Buy Your Wife at Least as Much Jewelry as You Buy Your Horse. <laughs> Other observations, I forget all the rest of the title. Anyway, um, but uh, I was I was a little surprised at how how uh, rough and somewhat racist he was <laughs> at the beginning. I'm glad that that's something that uh, that that Andy Daly has steered away from <laughs> as the character has evolved. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, I mean, we've all said things we regret. It's true. Uh, you know, there are hundreds of episodes of podcasts uh, that I have done over the last uh, 15 years of my life that I'm sure I would not be proud of, of anything that I say in some of those. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, there's episodes of this show that I've, you know, I've, I've uh, apologized in the middle of, so. <laughs> <laughs> oh... Humanity. Yeah. Should I pick a movie for next week? You should. Okay. <laughs> uh, that is if you, again, do you want to keep doing this? I do. All right. Yeah. For now, at least. All right. I'll let you know. It's, a, it's on a week-by-week basis. <laughs> oh, that's disappointing, but fair. <laughs> uh, so the movie that I would like to watch... Uh, is, I believe, a Netflix original movie. Okay. Uh, it might not be. I don't know. But I know it's on Netflix. Uh, it uh, it uh, is a, uh, from what I understand about it anyway, from watching the trailer, uh, sort of a mystery thriller kind of thing. Uh, it stars Olivia Coleman, uh, And it's called The Lost Daughter. Okay. I, 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 I don't think that was a Netflix movie. Okay, but, maybe it but, wasn't. Uh, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought it, I thought it looked interesting, and I really like Olivia Coleman. Alrighty, so let's watch that. Okay, let's do that. All right, the lost daughter. The lost daughter. Yes, well, on Netflix <laughs> and on the Viewmasters next week. Goodbye. Goodbye. Hold for room tone. You're really doing it. Okay. Thank you for listening to the Viewmasters. You can subscribe to the show directly at view.guttertrash.net or at iTunes and leave us a review. Visit view.guttertrash.net for email information and links to Facebook and Twitter. We'll see you next time on the Viewmasters. Masters.